Take a look at what I just found. Is it a ladder? Nope, you'd be wrong. This was built a while ago by Peter, Jessica's brother. He used to live out here for a little bit. And it was intended to be a form for making adobe bricks. It's been weathered. It's separated a little bit between the boards. I'm sure there's gonna be warping involved at this point because it hasn't been treated at all. You could tell the lumber is grayed. I'm gonna tear this thing apart and to see if I can still make some molds out of this thing. Uh, hopefully, if I cut it up, I can uh, reduce some of the warping, shift some of the boards around. I think it'll turn out pretty nice. Here comes the rest of the family. <laughs> Did you guys have a good walk? Was it productive? That's code for he pooped. So I'm losing light, gonna try and cut as much wood as I can before the sun goes down. I don't wanna use too much power when we're not making power, you know what I mean? So it looks like these boards were cut to be about 14 inches. I'm gonna cut them down to 10 inches, and then the longer boards, I'm gonna cut those down to 17 inches. So when I put them together, it'll be a 10 by 14 square. Time to give this old wood a little new life. Time to light it up. Woo! <sighs> Got my band clamps out here. So I'm gonna take a couple of my long pieces, a couple of my short pieces. I'm gonna sandwich the short pieces in between the long pieces. Uh, like so. Throw my band clamp over it. I'm guessing we're gonna see crew any second now. Are you gonna take them? There he goes. So I'm gonna put some screws in there and then these will be ready to go. Welcome to the playground. Been busy all morning, trying to kind of finding things, collecting things, gathering things over here. I got myself a mixing tray so I can uh, put the soil in, put whatever stabilizer in there, get it mixed up, then I'll put it in the mold. I got four molds ready to go. I got a couple of coffee cans now we don't drink coffee, so these, these were donated for, to us. I got the coffee can specifically so I can find a ratio that works well. I can measure it by the coffee can. I know, very scientific, but that's how this process goes. Got a couple tools, my tamper and my sledgehammer just to get everything compact in the molds, real nice. And we need a little water to moisten my mix. 100% pure rainwater. Start your day right. With that earthy aroma. To get up and go. So what I'm about to do is a four different tests, each one measured by coffee cans. Two parts soil to one part stabilizer. But my first one is gonna be strictly soil. This is all subsoil, pretty much uh, down to the caliche layer. So I'm interested to see how strong this is just by itself. Let's go on and try and get these other ones done. So this will be all soil. Uh, we'll add sand to this one, so it'll be a sand soil mix. So I got four cans of soil in here. I got one can of sand in there. Add my second can. 
Ah. Now I'm just gonna mix these up dry. Organic material out of there. And from all the rain we've got, I really don't have to add too much water to this mix either. The soil was wet. The sand was wet. Probably not the best tamper, but it'll do in a pinch. So this one should be an interesting mix. I know for sure adding the cement is going to make this a lot more stable. It'll be interesting comparing how this mix uh, works with the cement. A 2-1 mix on the cement might be a bit heavy. <laughs> it almost looks like all cement. Of course, you got a lot of little balls here. It's this kind of thing you want to avoid when doing your own mix. So we got our earthen mix, earth and sand, now earth and concrete. For the last one, earth and lime. This is a natural lime. I picked this up at, uh, I think Home Depot. Kind of reminds me of uh, Muddy Buddy, but uh, this is not powdered sugar, I assure you. Don't eat it! Shoot, I got a whole other can. Now this looks like a winter wonderland. Can't even tell it's soil anymore. It's always a workout doing some tamping. We've got them all set now. Just gotta wait for them to dry. Then we'll see how they stack up against one another. Whew. Now this looks like a winter wonderland. Can't even tell it's soil anymore. This is not powdered sugar, I assure you. Don't eat it! Let these things dry and then I'll do a little test to see if they hold up. Uh, it might take some time for it to cure. So to get a better idea of the ratios I want to do of kind of clay to sand, I'm going to do a little bit of testing on the subsoil. we got a bunch right here. But basically I'm going to fill my jar one third full. I'm going to put the rest in with water, put in a little spoonful of uh, soap. I use the Dr. Bronner's, shake it up, and then we'll see what we got. So I got my soil in there, I got my water, added a little bit of soap. Now we'll shake it up. Ooh. Let's get this out a little tighter, shall we? Ooh, it's leaking everywhere. It's leaking everywhere. Some kind of nasty chocolate milk. Now the particles are actually going to settle fairly quickly. Well, it's a chilly morning here in the desert, but I had to come out here to show you the results of the jar test. Performing the jar test is very simple. I just filled the mason jar one third full of soil and the rest full of water. Added about a spoonful of soap and shake it up, making sure all the particles are dispersed in the water. After about 15 seconds or so, all the sand particles dropped to the bottom and then I just marked on there where my sand line is. It takes a while for the clay to settle. This has been sitting for a few days now and you can see the water is still a little cloudy here on top. Now you want to wait for this to get as clear as possible to get an accurate clay reading. But I don't think it's going to change too much. But you can see we have a lot of clay here in our soil. A third of our soil is clay, so about 33%. It's really pretty decent still for earth bag building. We might need to add a little bit of sand. That brings me to my next point, all the bricks I made. So with these original bricks I made, I was really just playing around. I couldn't wait to get my hands in the dirt and just start experimenting a little bit, you know? That's what it's all about sometimes, just getting in there, kind of playing with the soil, kind of seeing what works for you. I made one, it was just the soil, and it held together for a little bit, but ultimately it cracked and crumbled. Uh, I made one that was uh, very sand heavy, and that didn't even make it over here to dry. It just absolutely crumbled right from the get-go. And then I added a couple that were very heavy on stabilizer, like I one third of the mix was stabilizer, which is way too much. You wanna try and limit the amount of lime or concrete used in this mixes. But ultimately, I really wanted to wait for the results of the jar test to make decent bricks. And that brings us to these three. 
Now after the results of the jar test, I knew about one third of our soil content was clay. So now I was able to make a decent ratio mix uh, with our bricks. So I was able to add just enough sand to make this about a 75% sand, 25% clay ratio. This is about as good as you can get for a sand clay ratio for earthen building. This brick was made without any stabilizer, just the soil from the ground with a little bit extra sand added to it. Now this one over here and this one over here has stabilizer. So it's got the right clay sand ratio, but with this one I added 10% concrete and with this one I added 10% lime. So it should be interesting to see how each of these stack up against one another, the ones with the stabilizer and the ones without the stabilizer and see just how sturdy they are. Ultimately, we would like to build our house without adding any stabilizer. If we could just get it with the soil from our ground, maybe adding a little extra sand, we would absolutely love to do that. You know, if it comes to it and we have to add a little bit of concrete, you know, how little concrete can we add? It's one of the most widely used materials, but it adds so much carbon to the atmosphere. If anything, maybe we can use the lime or, you know, if we can get away without using any stabilizer at all, that would be the goal. A fresh ground taste to get the job done for those with determination and grit. And then after enjoying your coffee, you got a nice little tool as well. <laughs>